Hi there, YouTube. This is Emma. Thank you so much for joining my channel for yet another yoga class. We're gonna go ahead and get started today. Let's go ahead and grab a child's pose near the back of the mat. Take your knees out wide. You're welcome to use any props during this class, but you don't necessarily need any. Forehead down, arms extend. Start with your forearms just really melting onto the mat. Make this a really nice passive child's pose. Not too much effort. <sighs> Take a deep breath in. Exhale. Anything that's kind of weighing you down, stress, tension, problems. Imagine releasing those on an exhale, leaving them off of the four corners of your mat. Your mind does start to wander. I like to think about, you know, the four corners of the mat kind of being your little yoga island. Keeping your focus within these boundaries. What's actually happening? What are you actually experiencing within these four corners? Everything else can wait. Now make this a little bit more passive. Walk your hands a little or uh, more active. Walk your hands a little bit more forward. Push into your palms, lift your forearms, lift your elbows. Try to lengthen your waist. Continue to sink your tailbone back. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, push your hips back. Walk your hands over to the right. Bring your right hand down by your right knee. Actively push down into your right hand. Drop your left armpit a little bit. Take a deep breath like you're trying to breathe into your left hip. Exhale. Walk your hands all the way over to the left. Left hand down by your knee, a little bit of a push, almost a twist. Right armpit dropping. You're trying to hide your armpit. Walk your hands back through center. Roll yourself up to a tabletop position. Bump your knees in under your hips. Inhale, arch your back, pull your sternum forward, look up. Exhale, round your spine, tuck your chin in. Again, inhale, arch back, look up. Exhale, round. Do three more cat cows. Great time to start actively breathing, pulling the breath in, finding the top of your breath, and then pushing the breath out, finding the bottom of your breath. Let the movement follow the breath, not the other way around. Last one. Tabletop position, extend your right leg out to the right with the toes pointing forward. Sink your hips back towards your left heel. If you need to flex your right foot so the toes point up, you can. Then bring your shoulders forward once again. Push your hips back and forward. Last time, go back, pause, three. So half child's pose. Right toes either pointing forward or flexed up. Either way, breathe into your inner right thigh, two. One, lift your hips up, lift your arms up, push your hips forward. Grab your left wrist and lean over to your right. Feel this right hip pull back a little bit, left hip going forward. Press the top of your left ankle down. Inhale back up. Let's try to bring this left hand back towards the left heel, like a half camel pose. Push your hips forward. I like to lean back and even extend that right arm back, but the right arm straight up is good too. You could also go right hand behind your skull to help support. Take a big inhale. Exhale. Lift yourself back up. Your right hand down in front, like you would put your right hand down for tabletop. Your left arm diving all the way through thread the needle pose. The right leg is still out to the right in thread the needle pose. Walk your right hand forward. Press the top of your left ankle down. Now, if you'd like, if you have the space, you could walk your right foot a little bit more forward and the left hand could grab the outer right ankle. Totally optional. 
It might not be accessible, especially this early on, so don't force it. Three. Could also take your peace sign fingers and grab your big toe instead. Two. One. Walk your right hand back beside your face. Push down. Unwind. No need to reach the left arm up. Just come towards a tabletop with the right leg out to the right. Spike your left toes to the mat. Keep your right leg out to the right as you lift your hips up and back. You're still trying to push your hips back like they would go in down dog. So you're not shifting your hips over to the right. Hips go up and back towards the back of your mat. Feel that stretch on your inner right thigh. And then without dumping into either hand, without shifting your weight around too much, try to lift your right leg up. Bend your knees, stack it up so you're in a three-leg downward facing dog. Hug your right heel towards your butt, squeeze. Take a big inhale. Exhale, crunch your right knee into your nose and take a soft step forward. Drop your back knee to the mat and reach both arms up to a low lunge. Feel your inner thighs pull towards each other. Sink your right heel down, less grip with your toes. Grab your left wrist again, inhale, and exhale, take it to the right. One more breath. Come back up through center, half split, regular hands on the mat or twisting left hand on the mat or a block, reach your right arm up. Flex your right toes as you try to pull your right femur bone back towards the hip socket. The top of the left ankle is still pushing down, belly button pull back. Maybe if your right arm's up, can you look up towards your thumb? Big inhale. Exhale, right hand down. Bump it forward, standing L. Hands go in front, matter blocks, left leg lift. Focus more on the left leg being straight than the right. You can put a little bend in your right knee, push the ball of your right foot down, tone your belly. And then gradually you're working to push that right thigh bone back. Sternum forward, shoulders back, three. Outer left hip drop, two. One, step your left foot behind your right foot so your ankles are crossed. The pinky toes are close to one another. Inhale, rise, come all the way up to stand. And again, grab your left wrist and lean over to your right. Push your hips slightly to the left and soften your bottom ribs down. I like a little bend in the right knee. Come back up through center. Sweep your arms back. Start to hinge your weight forward into a warrior three. Lift your left leg up behind you. Pull your chin towards your throat. And once again, outer left hip dropping. Little bend in the right knee is great. Push the big toe mound down. Step your left foot hip width with your right foot. Bend your knees and reach your arms up chair pose. Turn your pinkies in slightly. Try to feel some space between the shoulder blades. Take an inhale. Exhale, fold forward, straighten your legs. Inhale, lift up halfway. Plant your hand, step back with your right foot, then your left foot to a plank pose. Dome your back, feel your pubic bone and your hip points try to pull forward. Inner thighs squeeze really high on your toes. Almost plug your shoulders back. Slowly lower, with or without the knees, all the way down to your belly. Great, let's go ahead and roll out the shoulders a few times. This has become one of my favorite things. Feels really awesome. And then kind of feel when the shoulders roll down and back next time, hold them there. That's what you want to feel in cobra pose. A lot of people shrug their shoulders up to their ears, but the shoulders roll down and back. The back and down your spine is exactly what you want. So push into your hands, lift your chest up. Try to avoid the shoulders shrugging up by the ears. Behind your heart is pushing in. So sternum forward a bit, spread your collarbones and then lower yourself back down. So that's the upper body, the lower body. A lot of people roll to the outer edges of their feet and their heels spin out. We wanna keep the toes pointing directly back. So you almost wanna feel your inner thighs melt towards the mat and then the inner edge of the foot, the top of your big toe. So the inside blade of the foot is kind of rolling inwards. See if you can feel that as you lift yourself up. So the toes aren't spinning out, the tops of the feet are heavy, inner thighs melting. 
and then lower yourself back down. We'll do that one more time. Inhale, roll up, cobra. Exhale, child's pose, knees wide. Take a breath in. Exhale. Shift forward, tabletop. So the poses, it's, you know, sometimes the poses feel easy. You want to make sure you're doing them correctly, engaging the right parts of your body. Oftentimes, they might feel easy because your body has found a shortcut, a way to make it easier. Take your left leg out to the left with the toes pointing forward. Sink your hips back towards your right heel. Bring your shoulders forward. Do that two more times. Go back. Forward. Go back and pause. Oftentimes what the body wants to do, what it naturally does, we're trying to counter that. So in a lot of poses, when the hips want to swing to the right, you want to pull them back to the left. When you notice it's easy to collapse to the inner arches of the feet, and you're really trying to push the outer blade down. Shift your weight forward once again. Reach your arms up. Grab your right wrist and lean to your left. Hips pushing forward, outer edge, left foot heavy. Come back up center, right hand, right heel if possible, left arm reach up. Could always go to a block or you could just take it a little bit out to the right instead. Three, two, one, lift yourself back up. Left hand goes in front of the mat where it would for tabletop. Dive your right arm all the way underneath like thread the needle. So you're gonna thread the needle with the left leg out. Walk your left hand forward. If you have the space, you might have to walk your left foot a little forward. You can grab your big toe or the outside edge of the ankle. Press the top of your right ankle down and then bump your hips a little bit to the right. Tone your belly for three. Two. One, walk your left hand back beside your face. Push down, both hands on the mat. Keep your left leg out, spike your right toes to the mat. Lift your hips up and back like you're pushing them back towards down dog. So you're not trying to shift your hips to the left, you're shifting them back. And then without dumping into either shoulder, either hand, see if you can lift your left leg up, bend it, stack it, hold it open, squeeze your heel towards your butt. Inhale, exhale, take a soft step forward, left foot. Drop your back knee and reach both arms up on Janayasana. Feel a little lift through your hip points. Pull your belly button back. Grab your right wrist. Inhale. Exhale. Lean to your left. Top of your right ankle is pushing down. The toenails pushing down to feel more stable. Come back up through center. Half splits. Hands on the mat or just the right hand on the mat. Left arm reaching up. Flex your toes. If your left arm's up, can you look up at your thumb? Left hand down, bump yourself forward, standing L, fingertips in front, right leg lift. Flex your toes, you're trying to stamp a hole in a wall behind you. Hips even, so the outer right hip dropping, inner thigh lifting. Big toe mound to the left foot, pushing down. So you feel your left inner thigh squeeze, Step your right foot behind your left foot, crisscross your ankles, and then rise all the way up towards standing. Grab your right wrist again and lean to the left. I like a little bend in the left knee and try to push your hips over to the right. Come back through center, arms up, sweep your arms back and send your right leg back into a warrior three. So it's pretty much the same thing as standing L. Outer right hip drop, inner thigh lift. Left leg, little bend in the knee is great. Big toe mound push down. Step your right foot hip width with your left foot. Reach your arms up, chair pose. Look down, see your big toes. Try to bring your knees back, shins back. Take an inhale. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift up halfway. Hands down, step back, left foot, then right foot. Shift your weight forward, inhale. Keep your shoulders, hips in one line as you lower down Chaturanga. You don't wanna drop your hips or hike them up in the air. Push your feet back and roll to the tops of your feet as you pull your sternum forward and plug your shoulders back. Now you have to use your lower abs, try to roll over your toes. So you almost drag your feet forward 
and then flip your heels down behind, downward facing dog. Now a lot of people do chaturanga one foot at a time. Uh, that is originally how I started doing it until I learned, you know, to do both feet at once. So I'll go ahead and break that down again. Let's go ahead and roll the weight forward to plank pose. It can be quite challenging to do, especially the first few times. So if you do modified chaturanga, um, this tutorial is not for you. Eventually, if you wanted to do regular chaturanga, then I would come back to this. Shift your weight forward so your shoulders are past your wrists. As you bend your elbows back, you try to push your feet back. Then as you pull, you almost try to like drag your body forward, rolling onto the tops of the feet, pinning the shoulders back. Then you use your lower transverse abs, almost drag the feet further towards you, flip over your toes, and the heels sink towards the mat. So they both go at once. Now the first few times you do this, it'll feel quite almost painful on the tops of your feet, on the tops of your big toes. That's, that was my experience. The more you do it, the easier it becomes and you engage your body a lot more. Let's go ahead and lift those heels up, bend your knees, look forward, step or jump to the front of your mat. Big toes touch this time, lift up halfway and fold forward. Inhale, rise, send your arms all the way up, look up. Hands to your heart and down by your side. Inhale, reach your arms up, look up at your thumbs. Exhale, fold forward, push your breath out. Lift up halfway, sternum forward, hands down, step or jump back, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra or up dog with your inhale. Your exhale takes you back to downward facing dog. Hide your heels behind your ankles, push your thigh bones back. Squeeze your upper thighs and your lower abdomen where they meet at your hips and that's gonna give you more action, more control in this pose and most others, especially folds. Feel space between your shoulder blades, relax your neck. One more breath. Lift your heels, look forward, step or jump to the front. Halfway lift, fold forward. Inhale, rise, reach up. Hands to your heart and by your side. Bend your knees, utkatasana. This time your feet are together. However, if that ever doesn't feel good, you can separate your feet hip width. Try to sink your weight to your heels. Bring your shins back a little bit, inhale. Exhale, twist over to the right. Now here you notice your left knee, left hip want to go forward. Try to tug those back, opposing what feels easy, what naturally happens. Reach your arms up, twist to the left. Both arms up, standing back bend, lean back a little bit. Fold forward, empty your lungs. Lift up halfway. Plant your hands, step or jump back, vinyasa to downward facing dog. Lift your right leg up behind you, inhale. Exhale, crunch over to your left elbow, squeeze. Kick your right leg out so the toes point forward. Still stay high on your left toes to start, kind of sink your hips towards the floor. Feel that nice stretch in your outer right hip. Then spin your left foot flat like warrior two and curl yourself open to fall in triangle pose. The more the right toes can line up with the right fingertips, the easier or the better it's gonna be. Firm down the outer edge of your left foot. Slow as you can, lower your hips towards your right hand. So you want your right hand directly outside your right hip. Make sure this left leg is parallel with the back of your mat. We're gonna bring the bottom of the right foot to meet the inner left thigh. Stretch both arms up, turn your torso over your left leg and fold. I even like to, for the right hand to grab the outer left uh, foot so you're, you can drop your right armpit a little bit more and then the left hand crossing the inner arch of the foot so you're kind of crisscrossing your arms if you have the space.
Lift yourself back up, release your arms. Step your right foot outside of your left knee. Stretch your left arm up to the sky and take a twist to the right. Hook your left elbow outside of your knee. Continue to push the ball of your right foot down and try to look over your right shoulder, three. Flex your left toes, two. One, unwind your torso. Start to turn to the left, keep your legs as they are. All 10 toes are gonna to turn towards the long edge of your mat. Your left hand outside of your left hip with the fingers pointing towards the front of the mat. See if you can wiggle your right foot up a little bit more towards your left hip. So the right leg still crossed over the left leg. Lift your hips up into a horizon or sunrise lunge. The hips are lifting. It's like a side plank on the left with the right foot in front. Then see if you can lift your right foot up off the mat and flip it over into a wild thing. Push your hips up to the sky. Try to look at your right hand or your left hand. Either hand is great. Just try not to look up towards nothing. Either hand is a good way to protect your neck. Slowly flip yourself all the way around. You might be off of your mat, that's okay. Step your right foot forward towards your right thumb. Spin your left foot flat, warrior one. Reach both arms up. Bind your hands behind your back. Take an inhale, lift your sternum, and then an exhale, fold in, humble warrior. Bump your hips a little to the left. Try to sink your right hip. Squeeze your legs. Three. Two. One, release, bind. Walk it over to the back of your mat, skandasana. Bend your left knee and flex your right toes. You want your left heel on the mat, so if you need to, hands down, just go halfway. Work external rotation in your right thigh, so you want those toes pointing up the entire time. Gradually, you might sink your hips a little bit lower for three, two, one. Pivot towards the back of your mat, runner's lunge. Adjust your stance so your feet are a little bit wider. Reach your arms up again. Bind your hands behind your back, inhale. Exhale, kind of glue your left rib cage to your left thigh. Start to get really, really light on your right toes. You're not trying to push off of your right foot, you're trying to float off of your right leg and dive yourself into a toppling tree pose. So you keep your bind, left rib cage glued to the thigh. It's a standing split with a bind. Gradually work to straighten your left leg, turn your torso a little bit to the left for three, Two, one, hands on the mat. You could take a few handstand hops here if you like, leaning with that right leg. Or take a standing split. Eventually, standing splits, stepping your right foot behind your left foot, crisscross at your ankles. Walk your hands all the way over to the left. I like to bend this left knee a little bit. Walk your hands back through center and keep walking them to the right as you pivot on your heels to face the front of your mat. So you're standing at the back of your mat, but facing the front. Feet are hip width, grab onto your big toes, lengthen on your inhale and fold forward on your exhale. Lift your shoulder blades up away from your ears. Squeeze your legs again, upper thighs, lower abdomen, feel your kneecaps lift. That's gonna help you fold. Lift up halfway, release spine, fold forward. Walk your hands all the way out. Grab a pigeon pose on your right side, right knee up behind your wrist. Left leg long behind you. Any other variation you like, seated on your back, you're more than welcome to do that. Feel free to grab a prop underneath your right hip. Unclench your jaw between your eyes, between your shoulders. <sighs> Two. 
Two more breaths. Slowly walk your hands back towards you. Slide your right knee between your thumbs. Right knee is in the center. Slide your left knee up behind your right knee. Kick your feet away from each other and drop your butt back into Gomukhasana. Cow face pose. If this doesn't feel good, you could take Agni Sambhasana instead, stacking your shins instead of your knees. Try to sink your right sitting bone towards the floor. Stay here or right arm reach up, bend your elbow, hand to the middle of your upper back. Left hand by your side, thumb in, that's important for that internal rotation of your upper arm bone, and then bend your left elbow. If you've got your bind, you're thinking right elbow up, left elbow down, inhale. Maybe hinge yourself forward. I'm just gonna stay upright because this is enough for me on my shoulders, but if you would like to hinge forward, you are more than welcome to. You're trying to keep both sitting bones on the mat for three. Two. One, if you're hinged, come back up, release your bind. Let's go ahead, plant the hands behind us, unwind your legs into a Navasana boat pose, shins parallel with the mat, Take any rounding out of your back here. So if you need to, you can put your hands behind you. If you're ready for it, straighten your legs, three. Sternum lift, plug your shoulders back, two. One, cross your right ankle on top of your left ankle, grab your feet, stay on your sitting bones, lift your chest. Pull your feet towards you, towards your butt. Pull your feet all the way back. Hands can go on the mat. Roll over your ankle, step or jump back, vinyasa, to downward facing dog. Meet in downward facing dog, take a breath in, and exhale. Lift your left leg up behind you, crunch your left knee to your right elbow. Kick your left leg all the way out with the toes pointing forward. Start by just sinking your hips, feeling a stretch out or left hip. Then spin your right foot flat, fall in triangle. So the right foot's like warrior two, left shoulder over left wrist. You're doing your best to line your left toe tips up with your left fingertips. Inhale. Exhale, really, really slow. Drop your butt towards your left hand. Legs are in a 90 degree shape. Make sure your right leg is parallel with the long edge of your mat. Bring the bottom of your left foot to meet your inner right thigh. Face the back of your mat, reach your arms up. Fold over your right leg. Now maybe this left hand likes to grab the outer right ankle, right arm wrap on top, grab the inner right foot. And that way you can feel a little bit more drop of your left armpit, three. Two. And one, go ahead and bring yourself back up. Plant your left foot outside of your right knee. Reach your right arm up and then twist to the left. Flex your right toes, press the ball of your left foot down. Try to look over your left shoulder for three. Two. One, unwind, keep your legs. Turn all 10 toes to point towards the long edge of your mat. Your right hand outside your right hip with the fingers pointing forward towards the front of your mat. Push down into your feet and lift your hips up. You might even wiggle your left foot a little bit more forward towards the front of your mat. You should feel a nice big stretch through your outer left hip, your left side, intercostal muscles. Then see if you can keep pushing down through the outside of your right foot. Step your left foot behind you, wild thing. Keep your right shoulder over your wrist. Look at either hand, three, two, one. Flip it around, you might be off of your mat, that's okay. Inhale, left leg up, exhale step, left foot forward. Feel free to adjust your feet. We're gonna meet in a warrior one with the left foot forward, warrior one. Inhale, exhale, bind your hands behind your back, opposite thumb if you remember, lift your sternum, look up, exhale, dive, humble warrior. Hips stay sinking, it's easy for those hips to lift up, 
the body wants to, again, find the path of less resistance, conserve its energy, and you're trying to sink your left hip. It feels harder. Three. Relax your jaw. Two. One, release your bind, walk it all the way over to the right, skandasana, bend your right knee, left toes flexed. If you need to, just go down halfway, try to get your right heel heavy on the mat. Turn your right toes out slightly, like 45 degrees. Try to push your low back in, nice long spine, three. Two. One more breath. Pivot around to the back of your mat, runner's lunge, wider stance, bit, reach both arms up, crescent warrior. Bind your hands behind your back, lift your sternum. As you hinge forward, glue your right rib cage to your right thigh. You're not pushing off of your left toes, you're slowly shifting your weight forward and gradually lifting off that left leg. Toppling tree pose. Keep your right rib cage to your right thigh as much as you can. Twist a little bit to the right as you pull your right hip crease up and back. Push the ball of the foot down for three. Left toes point, two. One, hands on the mat, standing splits or some handstand hops. When you're ready, standing splits. Step your left foot behind your right foot. Walk your hands over to the right. I like to bend the right knee here, get some relief. Walk your hands through center all the way to the left, spin it around until you're facing the front of your mat. You're at the back of your mat, facing the front. Slide your hands under your feet, Pada Hastasana. Lengthen on your inhale, fold on your exhale. If this doesn't feel good, you can always grab your ankles from the front. Try to roll your weight forward towards your wrists. Imagine trying to pull your hands out. Lift your shoulder blades away from your ears. Tone your belly, squeeze your thighs, three. Work on those exhales, two. One, halfway lift, release. Walk it all the way forward, pigeon pose on the left side. Left knee up behind your wrist, and then you can wiggle your right foot back. Feel free to modify, seated or on your back. If your breath feels stuck anywhere, try to Make the breath more fluid, moving through those parts of the body where energy does feel stuck, kind of clearing it out, finding space, or making space. Two more breaths. Walk your hands back towards you. Slide your left knee to the center between your thumbs and your right knee up behind your left knee. Kick your feet away from each other and drop your butt back. Again, you can always take Agni Sambhasana instead, stacking your shins. Focus less on getting the knees perfectly stacked, more on the sitting bones nice and heavy. You'll likely feel the stretch even if it doesn't look quote unquote perfect. Stay here or take your left arm up, left hand to the middle of your upper back, right arm down, thumb in, bend. Make a bind. You can stay upright or hinge forward, especially if you're staying upright. Try not to round your spine. You don't feel the pose a lot if you're doing that. Push your low back in, sitting bones heavy, and sit there with the discomfort for three. Two.
one, release or lift your torso up if it's hinged, then release your bind. Unwind your legs, boat pose, shins parallel, or really try to straighten your legs on this last one. Push your low back in, inner thighs, hip flexors, working, 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 three. Keep moving your breath, two. And one, cross your left ankle on top of your right, point your feet, pull your feet towards you, roll over your ankles, step or jump back, vinyasa. Downward facing dog. Lift your heels, look forward, step or jump through to a seated position. And then we'll take diamond pose, feet out in front of you. You're making a diamond shape, so not bringing your feet super close to you. Slide your arms underneath your legs with your palms up and just drop your head. This is a restorative yin yoga pose. Soften your palms, let your fingers feel limp, kind of like noodles. Drop your head, relax your neck, maybe even shake your head out a little bit. Slowly start to lift your head, slide one arm out at a time. Close your knees up like a book. Put your feet flat on the mat and take yourself all the way down onto your back. Let's keep the feet flat on the mat and your arms by your side. This arch in your low back, minimize that. Low belly squeeze, tailbone tuck, like you're scooping your tailbone towards the front of your mat. Feel every single vertebrae on the mat and then lift your hips up, keeping that scoop, that tuck. Think about a block or a balloon between your knees. If you'd like to do supported bridge, you can always put a block underneath you. Three. Two. And one, slowly lower your hips down and hug your knees into your chest. Take your legs up, waterfall pose. If you like to do shoulder stand instead, you're more than welcome to. You could even use your hands to kind of help support your legs up to make it even more relaxing. Let your head, shoulders be heavy on the mat. Happy baby pose. Bring your knees to your armpits. Grab your feet or ankles. Tailbone, pull it back down. If this grip doesn't work, you can always take your arms, kind of wrap them around your legs, and then kind of clasp or hook your hands. So you're still getting the legs of happy baby. And then the, the elbows, the elbow crease kind of just helps keep your legs in place. This actually, to me, feels even more restorative. Once the fingers are locked, the legs aren't going anywhere. So you can just kind of relax here, keep flexing your feet. Release that grip, bring your knees together or take your right leg over your left. So knees together or right leg on top, drop your knees over to the left and look to your right. You might even slide your left shoulder blade a little bit to the left so your back feels more flat on the mat. Slowly bring your knees back through center, switch it out. 
knees together or left leg on top, taking your knees over to the right and looking off to the left. Maybe wiggling that right shoulder blade a little bit more to the right so your chest can feel more open, shoulders flatter on the mat. Bring your knees back through center, unwind your legs, hug your knees into your chest, squeeze. Then extend your legs out long, let your toes flop out, take your arms by your side. Again, maybe wiggle the shoulder blades underneath you, tailbone away from you. Release effort from your body. Allow even your fingertips and your palms even your toes and the bottoms of your feet to relax. There's no effort, no action, nothing to achieve or accomplish here. Just relax. The pose of being. Shavasana. Take a deep breath in, exhale. Wiggle your fingers and your toes. When you're ready, stretch your arms up overhead, maybe with a yawn. Hug both knees to your chest and roll to your right or left side. You'll use that as a way to come up to a seat. Try to keep your eyes closed so your attention can stay inwards. I am subscribed to this um, Buddhist monk. His name is Bhante. He uh, has done some Dharma talks where I live in Phoenix, but he does them all over. I get his email newsletter, and every morning it's a quote, uh, morning coffee with Bhante. It's one of the highlights of my day. Uh, today's was problems can be solved, but not by worrying about them. Problems can be solved, but not by worrying about them. So the worry takes up a lot of energy, a lot of mental, sometimes even physical energy. When you step on your mat, you move your energy around, you kind of work that worry out. So you have more space. You feel clear-headed, you feel sharper to actually tackle the problem in a way that makes sense. Not just by using your energy to you know, ruminate on it, worry about it, or be anxious about it. 
Draw your hands to your heart center. Take a deep breath in. Exhale. Om Shanti, Om Peace, Namaste. Thank you for choosing to practice with me and for continuing to support my channel. If you're a regular subscriber, if this was your first class, let me know what you liked in the comments. Give it a thumbs up if you did like it. Um, and I will also leave Bonte's website and everything below so you too can subscribe to his newsletter. I'm not affiliated with him in any way. I just really, really enjoy getting his emails each morning. They're always different and you know some resonate more than others, but they're all really good. Um, so I'll leave that inf information below as well if you do want to join his uh, list. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you next week.